here we are we have a fully disassembled rx7 just look at it that is so clean it's the next day um james has already started digging into it it's got the front subframe out and discovering the more interesting things um what did you find with the brakes so yesterday i mentioned the brakes felt weird and they're real like sometimes they're soft and sometimes they're hard and james discovered something well when i pulled this front subframe out i undid the um the fitting for the brake and no fluid came out so yeah i'd say it just wasn't bled properly both front brakes no fluid at all but surprising they still worked you know, it still stopped okay, they were just a little bit spun. Yeah, well, when I mentioned that, it was a bit scary because one time it didn't stop that well. Oh. And I think that was just after I floored it too. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be a bear shell in a second. <laughs> Not even rolling. I think we might go out to work today and take these subframes out and we'll give them a um, sandblast and clean up and I think we might whack some paint on them. Yeah, may as well. I kind of want to do the um, water blast, the underside of the, or degrease and water blast the underside of the floor and um, re-anti-chip all that, prep it all up and re-anti-chip all that. So it basically just needs a lot of TLC, just, it's, it's pretty good really for, you know, the age of this car, like the sills and everything, well, I mean, they're not perfect, but then, like, it's, it's not bad, so I think by the time we're finished, it's going to be, this thing's going to be crazy, honestly, like, Going the extra mile on this, and oh, it's just gonna be so sick. You guys are gonna have to wait and see. This is my first time working on something like this, while well, a rotary ever, basically. And James is also, and they are super simple and actually quite fun to work on. So, one other thing we want to try sort is the camber on this. These have terrible camber once lowered, um, and the suspension setup in these is so ancient. So, I'm not too sure i think there's some sort of link you put somewhere i'm pretty sure it's maybe that one yeah that one there and um yeah it pulls the camber up because you know when, once this thing's finished if it's got terrible fitment it's gonna let it down big time so um what else was there uh, also i think we are gonna go through and do a manifold a new manifold because like this one is just very very poor um and yeah just the position of it's just not ideal at all and james wants to do a full custom exhaust as well himself and in the cooler piping yeah and in the cooler piping just yeah basically everything because his exhaust here it's pretty average really you can't do some things and then not do the rest otherwise it's just going to look out of place so we're basically gotta do everything the guy that done this car he was very honest and mentioned all this stuff so uh, that that was good um he said he, he just you know rushed it it was a drift car setup so he wasn't too faced so it's understandable but now we're here to rescue it unrolled guards what a gem oh good god what have you found now for the sake of like a couple of bucks <laughs> to put connectors on them instead of just poking it through the hole and twisting them man like i thought the rb guys were bad <laughs> I mean, once upon a time, well, a few years ago, actually, these were only worth, you know, four or five grand, so I guess people just didn't care. Why didn't we buy, like, ten? We'd be bloody near on millionaires now. <laughs> so, yeah, just got to take these um, shock nuts off, and basically the rear subframe's ready to drop out, too. What? What's yours? DeWalt. So I took the socket off James's DeWalt gun and put it on my Milwaukee gun. He's trying to convert me. <laughs> to give him a better experience. <laughs> Voila, she is out. Oh, it's good having a hoist. They've got an interesting looking diff, that's for sure. Giving it a good degrease, then we'll give it a water blast. Stuff like this, missing nuts. I'm pretty sure this is aftermarket solid mount because I think these are quite prone to wrecking diffs because there's either no mount or a rubber mount there and the snout like look at how long it is from what I've seen anyway I'm no expert on these but well look how long the uh, pinion shaft is on yeah it. that's a recipe for a snapping right there it'd be ideal if we had a dry ice blaster right now for stuff like this but all right i'm gonna take this exhaust this downpipe off and um the wastegate also so i can get this manifold off these few things that are painted blue here just looks yuck so 
Got the throttle body there as well. I'm gonna take all this off, um, clean it up, and um, attempt to powder coat it. Got all that off. She's uh, almost a be a block now. We're just gonna give it a tidy up, but I mean, while we're here, we might as well just do some big power build. <laughs> Well, there's not too many moving parts, is there? What do you do to make a big power rotary? It need to be studded. That's what's it's at its limitations at the moment because it's not studded. Then that means a lot of machine work and that's where it gets expensive. Pretty hard to see, but the rotor housing and apex seals look all right. Not that it's a very good judgment doing it like this, but you can see a little bit of something. Well, I think the next plan is we should um, water blast or degrease the underside, water blast it, and I think we'll... Um, Mask it off through there. Yeah. Paint the firewall the colour that it's going. And then I think what we might do is we might paint underneath all the subframes. So obviously there's no underseal that's in between the subframe and the um the chassis rail. And then just paint it the colour from there up on that line. And then underseal all the wheel wells and stuff. Yeah, well, black. Underseal all the wheel wells all black again and well what holes up don't need to be there. This is gonna be extreme, eh? Uh, this, is, this is very iffy as spec. Yeah. Well, when, anytime you go to a car show, rotaries are always done too pristine. Well, yeah, the value of them now, you know, may as well. So, not usually a fan of underseal and the cars, but, but just because, you know, like, it was often done in Japan, and usually when that was done, it was like they were hiding something, but, you know, with this all being documented, and you're going to see everything done, you can see that there's nothing being hidden, so... It's only to make it look good and protect it for well, the f future. The underseal that's going underneath it won't be, you know, it won't be thick. It'll just be a thin layer just to protect it from stones and make it look clean, make it nice and easy to clean later on. Overall, big tidy up. Ideally, it would be good to change all these fittings out, these red and blue fittings. They're absolutely everywhere, like power steering lines and everything, and I just really hate them. If you don't know, um, those fittings are so so expensive to replace them all huge dollars, so I don't know get a new water neck because that's nasty You really do heaps of fabricating dime step Derek <laughs> Make it work. Come have a look at that. I don't know if you want to She's a piece of art, isn't it? <laughs> Did that not leak? <laughs> Taking the front pulleys off Clean those up and paint them as well water pumps now off Hopefully this whole housing come off and, oh yeah, easy. And powder coat that as well. Why don't we just get one of those things where they have the two AN fittings and just put electric water pump on it? Well, now you're talking. We can get away with it all. <sighs> throw that away. So, obviously, it needs a good flush out in the cooling system. Hasn't had any coolant in there. Gone a bit rusty in parts, but she'll be right. There's no, like major pitting well there's not much pitting at all actually anywhere which is a good sign it would be nice to strip all this down properly and paint it all properly so it all looks sharp yeah well that's the thing it's a bit difficult to paint all the housings like this when they're together it's not difficult it's just cleaner when you paint them apart and then put it back together it's like a car i guess when you put all the door handles and everything and lights and all that sort of jazz it's way cleaner when it's you put it all back together, but once it's, um, with everything's on, it's, you don't get the same clean job. That's the thing, it comes down to how far do you go. The trouble is, is the motor's supposedly being rebuilt, so there's no point really pulling it apart. Mmm. Because it is. As much as we'd like to, and make it even better, but, well, the thing I'm looking forward to the most is making up a screamer for this. Because... It sounds good, but that screamer pipe's just gonna top it off. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. Definitely keen on the um, factory wing too. They just top it off, and maybe even a roof lip. I think they need that factory wing. Looks a bit bare without it. Back out here at James's work. Um, got all the parts here that we're gonna sandblast and powder coat, and got the subframes here. And we're really struggling to decide like where we draw the line because. You can just keep going and going, um, but I think what we're going to do is take the rack off, take the lower control arms off, um, paint that, probably sandblast the lower control arms and just have them a raw finish. Obviously, like there's better solutions like dry ice blasting or vapor 
blast them, but we do not have that. Um, probably paint the brakes, and then, like, this is a thing, like, ideally we would want to do these um, dust shields and all sorts, but how carried away do you get? Just like that, it's all off. Uh, took the control arms off, and we've got the bare subframe. Power tools are so good. I don't know what life was like without them. So here's um, James's nifty sandblaster here. It's working good to the industrial ones. Well, it does it does a real good job. Times yeah. I've used it, it's more than enough. Big sanding, I tell you that for free. Yeah, shit yeah. Uh, gonna do a bit of a test on that, and then yeah, we'll do all this other stuff, and should turn out mint. Well, those results are pretty impressive. Very OEM. But um, yeah, the only thing is you just don't get as good of a finish with um, sandblasting, but like, it's fine. Vapor blasting or something gets a much smoother result. See them side by side like that, makes it worth doing. There we go, rear ends apart, subframe off. Um, gonna clean all this up. Interested to see what this turns out like. Well, I know it's gonna turn out mint. Paint this, the diff, probably the axles and stuff even. I mean, while we're here, we're going to the extreme. Tidy up that subframe. There's one subframe done, turned out pretty decent, good enough for paint anyway. We're getting more and more carried away, more parts are starting to come apart. We're like, oh well, whilst this is apart, might as well take this apart. Draw a line, James, draw a line. <laughs> Doing more and more and more. Didn't have intentions of going this crazy, but I guess it's going to pay off. The end result's gonna be bloody amazing. It's only nuts and bolts. Yeah, well. You've well, been telling me that all morning. Yeah, well. James has been asking me, do we leave it? Do we mask it off? And I'm like, well, it's just a few nuts and bolts, easy enough. Here we are, we have a fully disassembled RX-7 <laughs> coming here. And there's just parts everywhere. So yeah, basically all that stuff's ready for paint. I'm going to leave a few things raw, like those lower control arms. We're thinking about painting the subframes the same colour as the car. Decided we'll just go black and try keep it with that like OEM look. It would look good with the colour we're going, but at the same time, didn't really want to make it like tacky in a way, or like you know that 2000s look where people went a bit too over the top. Not bad at all. It's a major difference. James said it's not perfect, but can't complain at that. So obviously we're just gonna mask that off. Paint the front half of the diff. Think after this, James wants a sandblasting cabinet. Or someone to come and sandblast all my stuff. <laughs> that would be ideal. This has taken quite a bit of effort and time to do all this stuff. So what we've been having to do is sweep it up, um, put it in a sieve, and then put it back in. Most of you probably aren't aware, but if you get any little particles in there, it blocks up the sandblaster, or well, the tip of it, so. We're doing like two sieves and then putting it back in. Recycling the sand. Yep, I'd say a sandblasting cabinet is next what's on the dropping list. <laughs> Especially if there's more RX-7 bits to do. Should we get a vapor blasting cabinet too? Oh. Go out and just buy a big industrial one. Um, you just stand like 10 meters back and just squirt. <laughs> Is it going to fit? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, well, take the axle nut off. Oh, I don't think there's going to be anything bolted together in a second. Well, we're here in the booth. Got most things ready to go. That are going black anyway. There's a few things like. The stuff that masks like this is staying alloy. Going to the extreme, even doing like axles. Ideally, it'd be good to get new um, shocks or coilovers, but for now, we're just going to do them anyway because why not? We've gotten this carried away. We can't, we can't get any more carried away. So, yeah, you know, just some of it hasn't been blasted back 100%, i.e., the shocks, because we don't know what's going to happen to them later on down the track. Whether we swap them out for a set of adjusties or just replace them. So. At least now, while we're in here painting stuff, we might as well give them a quick flick and if we're going to use them, we'll use them. If we don't, then we'll swap them out. It's no big deal. Yeah, all this stuff like the subframe, like, these were real bad. Just grimy and paint flaking off and all sorts from, like, brake fluid. So, it is going to look mint.
Now that is the best rack I've ever seen. All done here, painting everything. Well, stuff that needs to be done right now, and it has come out insane. I think I've used that word too many times, but just look at it. That is so clean and OEM. What was the exact procedure we done? Um, so we sandblasted it, we put a coat of wet on wet epoxy primer on it, um, then we put uh, a coat of caprothane black, and anywhere where we didn't want black, but still wanted it sealed off, we put a coat of clear, caprothane clear over the top. So just to seal it off and make it nice and easy to clean for later on, so yeah, they come up good. Yeah, so like, if there wasn't clear on some of that stuff, like, it'll just get dirty so easy and it'll yeah. kind of, it'll be hard to get it back off. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll just get dirty so quick. And also it'll probably oxidize as well. Yeah. As soon as um, moisture, uh, oxygen gets to, like, um, Sandblasted aluminium now it gets white, it goes white and powdery. And yeah, just do that. I'm not even going to want to drive this car. I think it needs to go straight in the museum after this. Trailer coin. <laughs> okay. Wrapped up in bubble wrap first. Didn't really have an intention of going this crazy and it just keeps on going and going. I'm not mad at all because, oh, you guys are just going to have to wait until it's done, but it is going to be so good and there's still more to go once we paint the car and everything so yeah we tried to keep it like all somewhat oem look instead of doing all these custom colors everywhere i'm not liking these spring colors now i think it's definitely going to be ideal to try get some adjustable suspension but um the problem being is we need to get a cert after that and may as well get more adjustable things but it's pretty crazy because this is actually a pretty budget build. It's just a lot of time. Um, it's not actually much being spent, to be honest. Most of the money has been spent on it though, eh? Yeah. Someone spent a lot of money on the mechanical side of things, but just the body and bits and pieces are letting it down. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like usually a build like this would take most people, you know, months or years, whereas this whole thing's gonna be done in weeks basically like this is the first weekend we've actually worked on it and we've just gotten so much done well we basically went from driving it to an hour later the whole running gear was out and then by then it was night time and then the very next day it was fully stripped you know to the spec next day everything's blasted and painted so Another couple of days on the underside of the, the shell and then all this stuff can all go back in. The hardest part's always putting it back together so you don't scratch it. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's pretty impressive really. Like these are the builds I've been wanting to do for so long and I hope to do more like this. It's just the matter of, you know, having the right space and equipment, like having a hoist is just like such a big thing to have because it makes it so easy and you just, you can go extra on it. Yeah, I mean like all going well if our YouTube grows more, the builds we're gonna be doing are gonna be like crazy. We've got a lot of ideas, but yeah, it's just a matter of if we can execute them. James has actually been thinking about making a channel himself because he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes as well. He's got a few builds he's doing. Um, I was actually gonna mention it to him to tell him to do it. So if this video gets 2000 likes, I think, um, We'll try and make it happen. Yeah, you'll get to see a bit more of what he gets up to and maybe, you know, tips and tricks and whatnot. Yeah, I'll do stuff like um, paint touch-ups, um, color matching, just what I get up to in general life. Like, I've got heaps going on, just as much as what these guys are going on, but people are will willing to um, have a look and see what I'm up to. I'll, if, yeah, if the video hits the target likes, I'll, I'll start a channel and videos. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think that's about it for this trip anyway. I've got to head back home um, and I'll be here next weekend because we're actually bringing Cordell's car. So that'll be cool to get into that as well. So I'm not sure if the video is going to end here. Uh, might carry it on, putting the wheels back together and then end it. Pretty stoked with this progress. <laughs>